more than you wanted to, we can uh, come in here and kind of just get a refresher for ourselves. So I just wanted to point that out very first thing um, in case, you know, again, I don't cover something as well as I should have, or you have more questions, but um, can't reach out, you want something real quick, you can come in here and really just play around, find out what things mean, what things do, and your options there. So I'll close out of that to start and back to this um, opening dashboard page. We have a uh, bunch of information here presented to us. Uh, first, this top ribbon. Um, I'm in the Arizona plant right now, plant 1000. I uh, believe that's where I was in Phoenix when we did the training. But we can see that we have just some basic information. We have temperature here, a little bit of a weather forecast. So. 64 degrees, so they'll be running to get their winter coats on uh, and trying to brave their cold weather out that way. But that's for today. We have a future forecast of tomorrow, kind of just so we can get an idea of what, uh, what we're looking at there. You can see across the top that we also have some special uh, information here as far as non-pub days, alternate days, bonus days, add inserts. And as the data comes in and um, it's needed, these will be filled out for you when you open it up. There's a two-week outlook tab here uh, that just as explained, kind of gives a two-week outlook of uh, those same attributes, but we could see it in a list form. So we can kind of get an idea of what's coming, uh, coming ahead. And now going down the list, you can see that we have today's red zones here. Uh, it's an early warning system telling you about the routes that are over the um, preset CPM threshold. Um, there's no data here right now, but you can see that we would have a route. The carrier, the carrier's name would populate here, and the, num the CPM number would be here as well. Before training, I went through to the a bunch of the different plants that I have access to to try to find some data in there, but I could not find any uh, to show as an example. But uh, again, that NetHelp page, it does give a good description of uh, an example of what t today's red zones will look like and everything on this dashboard. But moving down the line, we've got wild cards today, uh, which are I believe, and Chris and Jason, please correct me if anything I say is wrong or totally out there, but uh, wild cards, locations that aren't planted on the geocode route or not assigned to a route would populate here. And it would give you the option to go into geocoding and place the locations on the route. But we'll get into geocoding at another training session. Just want to show you guys what uh, where this is and kind of given a description of what that is. Messages would populate here. For example, if it's raining, you could say put papers in bags. You can go ahead and create a new message. After it's done thinking, yep. we could come in here give the notes active date and a date that it expires on, a title, and we can enter in our messages here. Okay. Click back to the home portal. So those messages would populate here so we can see it when we open up the portal. Um, anything in the future will populate here. We've got a carrier alerts, which shows a list of alerts. Um, if a route's being covered by somebody else, we can see here um, Brian Irving. This is the route he's covering and his phone number here. He's got a couple different routes he's covering today. Our complaints today. We see that we have a couple different options here, recoverable, unverified, hot, open, next day, repeat. Uh, these are just hyperlinks here. If you click any of them, we'll click the repeat. 
should take us to the complaints page where we can go ahead and view in detail or print out any report that we need. But again, we'll get into complaints and everything in a, a future training session. I just want to show you guys what this looks like. We have a CPM graph here showing by day um, the different CPMs. Uh, hovering over a different point and clicking it will take you to the CPM page. Go ahead and just show you what that looks like. Nope, oh, not authorized. All right, well, we'll have to work on that, but that should take you to the CPMs page where, again, similar to the complaints today, you can get a detailed view of uh, what the CPMs look like for that given day that you've selected. Today's, high, today's highest activity routes shows you by routes your starts, AC, address change, and your stops by route. It'll, a list will populate here and the following information will populate. Our top carrier assignments gives us our carrier names, the routes that they have, and their CPMs on those routes. Um, obviously sorted by uh, largest routes, or the, with the most carriers with the most routes to carriers with the least routes. And I don't know, was there a question in there? So on the activity uh, routes, it's blank. I'm sorry, so I, did, I didn't catch that. High activity routes, yep. So I don't see any routes posted. Is that because it's Phoenix and it's early or? Yeah, maybe um, let's see if I can go into a different plant and see if, there we go. So this is a different plant. This this gives you an idea of what it, what it would look like. See, we have our route, it has one start, three stops. Go ahead and click on the route. We can see a little bit of a summary here, our starts. It's a DC product and the address here. No special delivery instructions. Address changes, doesn't look like they have any, obviously here. Our stops, we've got three of them. And here are the addresses. Okay, and you can scroll down here get an idea of what, what you're looking at here as far as activity goes on a given day. Okay. I'm going to switch back to plant 1000 here. And scrolling all the way down, we have our e-contracts and e-documents that we need uh, to address. We can see here that there ha they have seven that need attention and 21 e-documents that need attention. So we could go ahead and click that, and we get a summary of what's needed. See here, we got our route number, our DSP name, our carrier name, Daniel, uh, when it was created, uh, the start date, end date, his start date and end date, I believe, his phone number, and email address. You can see that a couple e-contracts they need to address for him, and you can scroll down to see the rest. Same thing should happen when we come over to the e-documents and click need attention. And here again, route number, contract the name and a little bit of personal information for them so we can get a hold of them and get these uh, documents completed and signed off. Now these last three uh, options to 
for information here are pretty new. Uh, I believe they were rolled out in November last year. And they're mostly for plants that have been in activity for over a year, from what I understand. Um, obviously, this is a um, erosion report by the zip code. You can see it has this year's data, last year's data, but we haven't been active in the system for that long, so no data has populated here as of yet. Um, I'm assuming going forward, you know, um, by this time next year, there should be data in here so we can get an idea of what we're looking at. But uh, maybe Jason and Chris could go over this part a little bit more since I'm myself not so sure. I haven't seen it bef the data in there before, what it actually looks like. Yeah, Theron, you hit it on the on the nose, man. That's exactly what it is. Okay, perfect. Glad to know I'm on the same page here. So this is uh, this is just the dashboard portal. Wanted to stop and show you guys around there. Um, are there any questions before we get into the uh, route reports? Well, in the top carrier assignment, Darla Fields is assigned the 29 route or 23 route. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Right, so this is just listing the carriers and the however many routes they have. So we could see Darla Field has 23 routes, gives us our, the CPM for her. Um, Mark has 22. Going down, we could see the carriers with the least number of routes. It's just the giving you a list of responsibilities of the carriers. And mind you, Mike, this is Phoenix where they have large-scale contractors that have uh, a large number of routes assigned to them. Yeah, thank you, Richard. Yeah, that's what I was going to yeah. say. Any other questions? Yes, yeah, Theron, um, regarding um, the, like, the timing for when things update. So, for instance, like with today's red zone routes, is that is that for today's distribution day or would it be based on CPMs from the previous day? So, I believe that would be... Um, the previous day's information that how it populates. I know there are some um, some things here that show up in real time as far as like the complaints today page. Those update in real time, um, so it's constantly updating itself. The red routes today's red zone routes. Um, Jason, Chris, do you know if those are updated constantly or if they're how often those are updated? Yeah, <clears throat> there. That would um, that would be you know as you're starting your day, you know anything that had a you know higher CPM than the threshold that was was there would be listed there. So um, you know that you, when you log in at night, you know before you start your operation, you'd be able to check that that area. So it would be you know information from the previous day, um, so you would know who to talk to about you know their performance. Okay, good. And then um, maybe similar to that, regarding the um, the carrier alerts and the messages, um, how you know, like when when somebody puts the message in, does it disappear after a day? Like, what's the does it stay out there forever? How does it how does it refresh or get or get get cleaned up? So you can set an expires a note okay. expires after date. So we can enter in a date, uh, a message today, and set it to expire the calendar version tomorrow, or set a further date out. And then the last one's on the carrier alerts. You know, it seems like it's where you're catching if routes are down or whatever. Um, how is that getting populated? Uh, 
uh, Chris, Jason, I, I don't know. I don't know that question. The answer yep, no problem. So um, let's just, you know, if somebody was uh, going on vacation and they had somebody covering, you know, their route, they would be able to delegate their route. So, um, you know, here it says in that first one that Brian Irving is, you know, covering uh, for that, that particular route. So when when they set that up, you know, that who you know, whoever's going to be covering their route, they set it up for, you know, a specific amount of time, um, you know, so that the, it lets everybody know, you know, if there's a problem on that route, it's not going to go, uh, you know, be handled by the contract the carrier is going to be covered by the person that is, you know, delegated to handle that route. Okay, so you're saying that's coming, that, that information is only coming from the contractor. Is there a place where the, the DM is inputting that information at all or has the opportunity to do it? Um, yeah, so if there's a, a, a breakdown or something, um, that, inf that information would be able to be captured on this page also. Okay. Okay. Awesome questions. And writing down notes for myself as well as we go along. So all the questions help out everybody here. So great. To, to expand upon, uh, Jim just asked that question. If a carrier had uh, a car issue, how would you enter a carrier alert in? believe that would be through the if they're out in the field probably be the web or their mobile application they could do it through that I believe yeah so the carrier would be able to you know communicate that information back to you through the through the uh, mobile device um, and then you know if for whatever reason they're not using it and they call in um, you know, uh, here also there's a, a way to, you know, capture that information, uh, you know, from the plant side to, to have that information be added in as well. I just want to make sure the question isn't if the route is running late. Um, well, you know, Paul, if, if somebody calls in today at a flat tire, they're going to be an, an hour late. That should be an alert that we put up there if we see um, complaints coming in. We know that the carrier had issues with their automobile. Yes, that, and that's fine. That's probably what that's there for. I just don't believe that that is the actual same as putting in a late route re request that we put in through AS400 for the call center. Perhaps somebody from DART can elaborate that's on That's correct, that? Paul. That is correct. That is not integrated to the DART application. Uh, but you can go in to through event entry under plan operations, and that, that's in a future session where you will be able to enter things like that uh, to alert your team in Rochester as to the status of late trucks and, uh, and other events. But that's, right. not, but that's not really communicating back to GIX or AS400 or anything like that, right? That's just you're in dark. That is correct. It is, that is correct. It is not integrated. So at this point, it would be a separate process to post routes late, right? Right. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that's about the only thing that is not fully integrated yet, Paul. Just haven't gotten to that development. Yep, I just wanted to clarify it because I, I, I heard the confusion in the question and I wanted to make sure it was clear. Thanks. Yep, absolutely. Okay. So if any, anybody else has any other questions, we can move on to the, uh, the route reports option. So again, we could come over to this hamburger menu, click it, and come down to route reports. And you can see that we have a bunch of options within route reports to choose from. So we're just going to start going right down the line here and start with the uh, production reports. And this is where we can come in and print out any report that uh, the carrier needs. Um, carriers have the option of printing out their own reports as they go along or using the uh, DSP mobile app, um, you know, when they're out on their deliveries with their phones or their iPads, uh, whichever that they use. But for you and the plant, you could come in here. Within the route reports, we have a couple options across the top. Reports, recreate, 
preliminary and ad hoc. I'll go through each uh, one of those as we go along. But first, the report section. Our service days, come through and select. This Wednesday would be for today. Tuesday would be for yesterday's date. Monday would be for the 28th. Everything past that, everything past today's date, today's selection would be the previous. So this is previous Thursday. Nothing in here is for future. That could be done in the preliminary tab, but only a few hours um, ahead of runtime for the reports. Just kind of wanted to point that out because when I was learning, I thought, well, this is future, but that was my mistake. So these are all in the past, and we can see that it goes back to last Wednesday. Reports are kept in the system for eight days. On the 9th, it gets replaced. That's one thing I wanted to point out. So once we have our service day selected, we can come down to our routes. And again, these are Arizona um, routes. So we can see here that uh, this route, we have a couple different reports that we can choose from. We'll go right down the list of active subs list in the alpha order. We can just click it and then click get reports. Open or save. Opened on a different page. I'll bring it over. This might not be the best one to show because it only has one, but uh, we can see here that it gives us the our route, our, our route number, the plant, the day, the date, the address here, the number, building number 84, or apartment or floor, the draw, and our product. Since it's in alpha order, it gives us also the last name or company info on the report. So again, this might not be the best one since it only has one, but um, scrolling down at the very end, the last page will give us a sort of summary of what we've seen above. So for our product, it's the SP product, bundle size of 30, draw is only one, so they need to get one loose copy. If it was more than one, if it was like 35, you'd have one under this bundle count and five loose copy count. Okay, let me close out of this and select another route. Hopefully this has more of an example of what I was looking for. Yeah, this looks better. Okay, so this kind of gives you a better idea. Same report. Um, Active subs list at alpha order. It doesn't tell you where but now we can see. I'm sorry? Uh, was there a question? Okay. So again, address the draw and the product and the last name or company, company info. So since this is more, coming down, we have a little bit of a better uh, subtotal here. The AZ product have a bundle size of 60, but they only have a draw of five, so they need five loose copies. Similarly with CG, it's got a bundle size of 50, but they only have six to deliver, so they need to get six loose copies. Moving down to the next active subs list sequence order, you can go ahead and click get reports and open it up. Bring it over. And this looks similar to the, one, the report that we just saw in the alpha order. However, this is uh, shown by sequence order. So there's no names or company info here. They just see address, draw, product, and 
where it appears in the sequence order. Right. So um, one thing I do want to point out here, just from experience in uh, Arizona, a lot of the reports came out w in the alpha order. And when it came out, the carriers really didn't like it so much. They didn't really want to see names or company info. They just wanted to see, all right, where's my address? Where's How many papers do they get? What papers do they get? And boom, they're done. So when we get further in, we can go, we're going to go over a sequence order and putting the route in the order that the carriers want. They can do that themselves or you guys can do that for them. Um, but just something to, to note the difference in the reports. Some work better for other carriers than different reports. Um, it's just personal preference. But we can go down, we have a special instructions here under the address, just so it sticks out for the carriers if they need it. And scrolling down to the bottom, we still have that nice little summary here of the product and how many papers that they need to grab on their way out. So we'll move on to the one column route book. And click reports. This report gives you uh, literally turn by turn directions to get to the uh, to get to the delivery address coming out of the plant that they're located in. So we can see here they start their route on North Rockwell Avenue, take a right on West Centennial Boulevard, another right and so on and so forth. Until they get to their bold highlighted delivery address. And at that time, that's when it gives you the, the address number, the product and draw. And then once that is delivered, it picks back up the turn by turn delivery instructions until we get to the next. Okay. And since this is a one column route book, it only has delivery on one side of the report. I'll show you what I mean by that when we get to the two column. But if we scroll down, again we have a total page here. But we also have a little bit of a little bit different here. We've got a sequenced and unsequenced um, delivery addresses. If there was anything unsequenced here, it would be shown has the miles that starts calculated through uh, the geo coding and sequence order. So the delivery route is 31 miles. Service time, our drive time, and the adding the service time and the drive time together will give us our total time, uh, 43 minutes. Okay, so that's that's the one column route book. Just skip ahead here so we can see the two column route book. So we can see the difference here. Okay. So just like the one column gives us our turn by turn directions here. Well their address is in bold our product and the number of draw to be delivered. But unlike the one column, we can see we have an additional column here. So the way this page would be read is we would start over here where it says start route, go down to the bottom of the page here, and then start back over at the top. And go down until we get to the next page and start again on the left side. Right, so the two, two column route book saves, saves us some paper um, so we're not printing out a huge delivery list on one column and we still have our nice little summary total here at the end. 
So is this coming out of Dart, or is this a route smart portal that just flows through? Uh, this this is out of Dart, and it's through the a lot of it's the geocoding and the sequence order. Um, that's how the turn by turn directions are getting picked up. However, it's sequenced and geocoded. I'm assuming what we want to do is compare the list that we have now that are coming out of RouteSmart with this. And can we expect or Yeah, we actually did that last week, out. Mike, where this, the current okay. sequence values out of RouteSmart were transferred to Dart. So maybe the next step is to get this in the hands of our drivers and our agents and have them just review it or be sure that this thing is bulletproof. Yeah, and I exactly believe right. that's what uh, that's what we did in Phoenix too, right, Tony? That's exactly right. Once the staff is uh, in using the application, next step is to move out to the contractors and have them review and validate. Did I hear you say that this was a left root list first and then a right root list second, or is it just a uh, delivery yeah. board? For for reading the page, how the page reads? Yes. Right. So we start on the left and go down to the end of the page. Once we're at the bottom there, we come back up and start again. So we're not flipping pages back and forth. If a carrier prints this out and brings it on their on their route, they're not flipping pages, forgetting where they left off, how, you know, reading incorrectly. You just stay on one page, down, back up, down, change the page. Okay. Right. So the same as our standard route smart list, Phil. It's the same. Yeah. So when we loaded up the enterprise version of route smart in um, Rochester, if I believe we had about a 98% um, geocoded um, hit, we had to go in and change quite a few or recode quite a few addresses. We have to do that again now that we're in Dart or all that just moved over. Now PCF has a team that geocodes for us, Mike. Those that remain ungeocoded uh, are because they don't uh, have a, a corresponding street segment, might be a new street or we have it as a different name, in which case we'll refer that to Mark Wilkins in Louisville, and uh, he'll work with PCF to uh, to get it resolved for this for the local team. Do we know how many address didn't, how many addresses didn't geocode? Not, not yet. We haven't gotten to that step. All right. And Tony, just a quick peek. Are we still trying to get the uh, starting points on some of the routes corrected? Yes, we are, Paul. Thank you. Okay. So this two column route book, close out of that and go to our route carrier, carrier mail report, get reports. And here we have, uh, da, 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 da. we've got our totals by product for today, our DSP name, our route, plant. Again, the draw and bundle size breakdown. We have our stop here. And if there were any complaints, repeat complaints, we can see, we can see total new start and restarts, total total product change here, little summary page. But we see the product that they were given and the delivery days. No summary page at the bottom. It's up at the top this time. Okay, close out of that. Next seven days active list.
And here we go. Give us a little breakdown by address. Um, you see the the, ad, the number. If it had an apartment number here, it'd be listed. Uh, the publication, the delivery day, and the customer name. All right. Scroll on down to the bottom. Again, we have our summary page. Breaking it down. Um, by day here. Let's go through the Arizona Republic. Um, on their route, they've got three delivered on Monday, three on Tuesday. For the Casa Grande dispatch, they had six on Tuesday. Um, giving us more of a breakdown here. Okay, now close out. We went over the two column route book. If you wanted to select more routes, get reports from, you can just shift and click or hold down control, select the routes that we want, the individual routes that we want, instead of just going one by one. So a quick question, the only time you see the customer's name is on that first report that says alpha order? Yeah, you can see it on the alpha order and I believe that seven days active list um, showed it as well. So so the report that's been removed from the old uh, the route smart is the subscribers by sequence, correct? Uh, it's been removed. I don't know of reports that have been removed from route smart. Okay, yeah, there's a different report. Than route smart. Yeah, it, there's a report you can pull from route smart. It's called subscribers by sequence. That sounds like it'd be active subs list sequence order, but uh, maybe somebody else can confirm that. But it doesn't have a customer name there. You, right. Uh, this one does not have, I'm sorry, active subs list sequence order does not have customers' names, um, just the number of the sequence order that's in. All right. When you, does that help me? I'm sorry, it's Chris, just to jump in real fast. When, when we look at the, um, yeah. when we look at the, the way to kind of set up the reports, there are ways to, um, you know, kind of customize these uh, reports. So if you if you wanted to have the uh, subscriber name in that uh, subscriber the sequence order list, there's a, there's an option for that in the preferences. So uh, you can definitely add that on if you if you'd like to. If you want a thirty second background of why it becomes useful, I can give you that if you if you'd like. And it's if we have uh, we have carriers that go into plazas and stuff where there's business names, but they, they have one address. So if they can have something where they cross-reference to say, I'm not looking for this address, I'm looking for this business within this mall. Right. So it's easier and, to do uh, it if it's a secret in the paper to say, oh, yeah, I'm We can for... easily add that if that's needed. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you. So this gives you um, reports by route. If we scroll down all the way to the bottom of this list, we have summary reports here. This is a summary reports of all the routes within the plant. You can see we have a, a lot of options here on the on the uh, right hand side. You can go through, get the carrier mail report. Right. Totals by product, uh, complaint per thousand, the CPM. Oops. It just breaks it down by by route for the whole plant. So it just sees everybody's um, all the reports generated for one in one report. Okay, and that's going to be the same with all of these reports here. Um, I haven't gotten in to play around with these as much. Um, so I guess once we get, uh, once you guys get access, we could go through and uh, just click and play around, see what each one, what information it brings back to us. 
and how we can use it in our the day to day operations. But that's pretty much how we get reports um, for carriers if they come in saying, "Hey, you know, I need it. I need my active subs list in the sequence order." We can go in, easily print it out for them, and they're good to go. Uh, so that's the reports tab. You can see we'll go over to the recreate. Very similar to reports. We choose our, uh, we have our day chosen for us. It's just recreating today's report. Our route report, we have it by plant, route, or staff. Um, I've always believe that's selected route for me um, when we were going through it in Phoenix. But same with the reports. What we did with reports, we could click our route and click on any report that we need to recreate. Say a carrier called in sick or, you know, they popped their tire on the side of the road. We need their um, one column route book so we can go out and deliver that route or have somebody else cover for it. We can go in there, get reports, get the report for that down route. Okay, the, just the thing, you can't change the service day. It's just covering today's uh, report. Preliminary. Go ahead and click that. This will, this will occur a few hours before the final run, so we don't see any data in here right now. Uh, but if you wanted to get an idea of what you're looking at for, for the day, we could come over to here, preliminary, pick our route, pick our uh, report that we want to see, and we can print it out, just giving us a little bit of a heads up of what we're looking at. The ad hoc page. Um, when we were going over training, I think Chris and Jason, we they said that we would be provided with a solution ID, but now it seems like there's solutions ID, solution IDs um, in a drop-down menu. So I don't know if it's changed at all, or since there's live data in here now, we can go through it. Yeah, so in, in the ad hoc tab here, this is where you would go if you're running any sort of solutions, like um, if you're working on um, – you know, trying to do some restructure work or, you know, anytime you kind of have to rerun something, um, you would come into this ad hoc tab and this is where you would find your, your information. So if you were, um, you know, looking to see if you can combine a couple routes together and what the, you know, information would look like, you would get your, your reports here in the ad hoc tab. Great. And then routes would populate here reports would populate here. Same basic fields, just click the report, we can get it, get it in our hands and work with it. Okay, so were there any questions about this section? Can you just click on the first report just real quick so I can look at it? Alpha, alpha order? Yeah, and if you have one with multiple uh, multiple draws as opposed to just one. Yeah, let's see. Let's see what this guy looks like here. Okay. And I don't know if it's just because of this, but I don't see um, IPDs or locations on any of these. You don't see locations on any of these? Yeah. Delivery information. If they went at the garage door. Yeah, if they're in Genesis, they will be passed to guard. Okay. There are some, just like routes, like there are some versions of the route reports that are more for auditing than for delivery, but all at, so it may not be on every version that you see, but if there is a delivery list, uh, all the delivery lists should have those on it. If not, we can add it. All right, thank you. 
And I believe once if they uh, come through, the delivery instructions would populate underneath the address. Any other questions about reports? Okay. So again, we'll come over to this little hamburger menu, go to route reports. The next section is analysis. So we can go through here so we could see, uh, we can select criteria so we could see specific data sets and view the data on reports so we can get those. So we can see here, we've got our service days. We can go ahead and select that or select all. Let's just go with Wednesday. The report default, again, we can see it by plan or by route. Route. And publications, client level or product level. Now that we've got that selected, we could go through and select our routes, either one by one, hold control, or hold shift to select multiple, or we can select all at the very bottom there. We'll just go with one for right now. Publications, we can go in and select as needed. I'll just select all at the moment. Frequency. Every day, every day except for Sunday, Saturday, Monday through Friday, not the weekends. Whatever our criteria needs, we can go ahead and select that. I'll just go for every day. Wouldn't that strip everything out that isn't a Wednesday anyway because of the service day? Um since t today is Wednesday, you mean? You're asking for service day of Wednesday, which, yes, is today. But uh, the, the frequency, I would think, because Wednesday is selected, it's only going to take those <coughs> frequency uh, selections that have Wednesday on them and display them anyway, correct? So that's almost a redundant feature, unless you're doing all days and want to filter it. I'm yeah, I mean, yeah, no, sure. Um, I I don't know the answer to that question. Sorry. Um, let's see. Let's just see what that one looks like here. I'm sorry. What was the question? selecting the service day of Wednesday, so selecting the frequency. Um, I see what you mean unless, now. But unless we are doing it all day here. and want to filter down to like only the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday people, that it's almost a redundant feature. Again, I just want to make sure it's... Yeah, I think what's going to happen is if you select all days, you're going to get seven different like report Wednesday. outputs for this. If you select Wednesday, you're going to get the Wednesday output on your report. And that's what we got here, yeah. what just came out. So, Chris, if you're selecting for Wednesday only, you can theoretically select, to, uh, do a quick selection of all FODs. It's only going to pull those that are valid for Sunday or for Wednesday, correct? Correct, yeah. So if you're, you know, today's, you know, the, today's Wednesday, so it would be the third Y over. So it's going to pull anything with a, you know, with a Y in that particular column. Yeah for uh, for today and you're going to you're just going to get a report that's going to have the Wednesday information if you can select a service day for all days you're going to get a report for Monday report for Tuesday report for Wednesday based still off of the frequency um, so it's just it this is something you would use you know it was designed um, you know to, to help you you know kind of look at um, your, your your current route structure see where you can you know what would happen if this happened if you took away some of these things so, um, you know, it's, you know, 
that that's what it was designed for. Uh, you know, basically what people kind of really use this for is, you know, saying, hey, you know what? Um, I know that, um, you know, you're pretty good Monday through Friday when you do your deliveries, but all of a sudden on the weekends, you know, you, you tend to, to have more complaints. You know, let me give you a list here that has just, you know, your Saturday information on it so you can, you know, get prepared for the for the weekend and stuff like that. So, um, you know, this isn't really, you know, really used for delivery um, so much as, you know, kind of help you either, you know, see things, you know, that would happen in the future if you did something different or if you wanted to strip away, you know, a particular uh, publication or publications uh, or, or particular, you know, days to help you, um, you know, kind of figure out what what it is that you're you need to kind of bone up on it and, and you know, help help you get those deliveries done better. Yep, and the report did pull up just the Wednesday, so sorry, maybe I did a poor job of explaining that, but I see what you're what you're saying now with the service days and the frequency. Okay. So that covers the analysis part. Are there any additional questions to uh go over for this analysis? If not, we'll come back over. Go over the bundle count tool. Okay, so here we can view how many bundles by product for each carrier uh, is needed and how many papers come in with the bundle. So again, we have our date here. We can change it if needed. Go by route, selecting individual ones or bulk. We can select our product, either select all or individually. Our delivery type. And we can adjust how many copies are in a bundle. It's set up 50 right now. We can go in and adjust it either with this sliding ticker or go in and manually adjust it ourselves. That set at 50. Genesis will be passing bundle counts to Dart at the way that it's produced at day end, but this uh, is here in the event you need to make a change on the fly. Right. Here, if we have existing uh, groups together, routes, um, that one person handles more than one route, group them together. We can either hide the groups on the report or display the groups on the report that we get. Again, we can hide our first names or show first last names. And we can go ahead and click create report. So I'm just going to select single copy. And no report generated. <clears throat> so would we probably select a few different products there. Right. Chris or Jason, do you know what would get us uh, data so we can just see what the report looks like? Uh, yeah, you know what, Theron, for, to be honest with you, at this point, I don't know. There, there isn't a real, real reason for anybody to really kind of come into this page anymore. We have, um, we have a new feature um, when you go to the bottom of this, uh, when you go to the bottom menu, when you're looking at this, where it's kind of an updated... Uh, Bundle count group, um, you know, all of this stuff is going to be generated, you know, with the file feed. So there isn't really any any real reason to come in here at this point anymore. Oh, okay. And it's, probably the same with the manage my group and manage yeah, my group. manage the manage my group. We have a we have a new tab that's a little easier to uh, to operate. So um, when you click on the 
the hamburger menu. You'll see on the bottom there's a new one. Um, yeah, go to route reports, and, and then on the bottom of that, you can see reporting groups. Right. It's a little easier to manage um, than the, that, that page is right there. So this is this is a relatively new page here uh, with you know within the last couple of weeks. Oh, I'm sorry, is it not there? No, this looks similar to what we went over before. There is a reason we could use that the bundle top size. I'm sorry, it's bundle count groups. Not yeah, it's okay. not the bottom one there. Okay, so so here is you know, and it's sort of an expanded manage my group page here. So you have the option here to um, you know create groups, rename groups if you need to. You can um, easily remove a route or two from a group. Um, and it's a little easier to use than the way that it was before because uh, if, you know before if you needed to eliminate a route, you had to eliminate the whole group and then recreate the group again. So this just makes it a little easier to um, to use. It's it's it's, a, it's an upgrade from from what we had before. We do have a reason where we could and use the bundle size for another for another task that we do at the warehouses. Um, when we get our inserts in, if it's a single package, we get the count for the bundle size and the bundle, how many bundles each carrier will need for their insert package on Sunday. If there's a second or third package, we do not have that ability, so we have to manually go in and say um, this many bundles will need to fulfill the carrier's draw. So if we if we had the ability to pull it up and say insert two or package two is in bundles of twenty, this is how many bundles each carrier is going to need in their carts. We currently don't have that. Okay. I think this will do it for you. You just run it off of the the, the regular Sunday draw and, and it can give you uh, the new bundle counts that you're looking for. And the groups are particularly yeah. helpful when you're trying to do this level of detail on what's at a DC or what's on the left side of a DC versus the right side of a DC, what is not at a DC, but it might be in plant 1075, but at a, at a large remote bundle drop, this allows you to drill into that. Okay. So this being new, I'm assuming, um, we could go ahead and create a new group by selecting maybe a few here. New group. And there's our group there. Right. And we can come in here, edit our group name, save it. So that's pretty new. Come over here. Just remove that so I don't mess anything up. Okay, so that that's under uh, bundle count groups. Okay. So getting into how we can change how the reports look, that's under report preferences. So this is going into, uh, I believe we had a question before about um, adding business names to the addresses for different carriers, like the, the mall was a scenario that was brought up, delivering to a mall with one address, but to a specific business within the mall. Um, we can come over here and change the preferences and how the reports look. Uh, there are two two preferences to work from. One's a plant preference, one's a route preference. Uh, something to keep in mind is if you work in the plant preferences, it's changing all the reports by, by the plant. Whereas if you go and work with the route preferences, you go into the individual routes to change how the preferences are set up. I think that's kind of an important uh, distinction there to make. So we could go in and we'll see what plant preferences look like first. Question?
No? Okay. So go to plant preferences, go to the route book, the different reports that we have available to us. Go to route book first. And you can see we have our one column, two column route book, and currently the two column route book group by address is activated. If we want to select the report, we can do that or deactivate it. We'll go ahead with the one column route book first, select it so we can see what's going on. In here, we should have we should see the preferences and how we can go about. Um, you know, making the changes to the report so it's more useful to the carriers or to ourselves. We could come here, check to show bundle count sizes and recap, the details line preferences. We can say if we want to check the display recap location on the bottom of the report or the top. Currently, we don't show it at all. If we want to see the business name, we can leave it checked or unselected. Right, and we can go see everything that we need or don't need in the report. Clicking apply will update the reports for us. So next time when we go in, um, we see the information that we want to see. So as you go along, same sort of preferences here. We can come in, select, deselect. This one we can see that the display recap is on the bottom of the location, or bottom of the report, sorry. Make any changes to that. Move to the active subscriber. And these work in the same ways. You select the report, change the preferences, and it updates it for uh, for tomorrow's runs. Okay, and again, that's changing the report by plant. If we go ahead and click route preferences, it's a different, it's a little bit of a different sort of setup here. And go to route book and click the one column to start. Do its thinking. Are there any questions while the while it's taking a little bit of time here? There we go. All right, so by clicking the route book, we can see um, that in one column route book, we get it separated by route. Okay, and we can click on the little icons next to the routes to either um, allow them to get the one column route book. So we can click it to activate. And now this route We'll be getting a one column route book option that they can choose from. Or we can deactivate the route from getting the report. We can scroll through to see the rest of our routes. If anybody needed to be changed, you can go in there and make those changes. So that's just a little bit of a different feature than the plant preference uh, view that we had before. If we go in, select the report, or rather that was already done before. Yeah, there. And if you wanted to get the preferences on that, you could just um, like click on the actual route, and then the, the optional, the optional come on. Um, oh, perfect. Yep. Thank you. That, that's what I was looking for. 
So same view. We can go in, select, deselect, based on the preferences of the, uh, the carrier on that route. Okay. The other reports are set up the same way. Clicking two column route book would bring up this sort of view. We can go in, select, deselect, click on the route, update the preferences as needed. Okay, were there any other questions that I think this meeting was set up for an hour and a half, so we're coming up on the 15 minute left here. So kind of wanted to get everything in, but also want to take the time to get your questions in as well. Okay. All right, so that's report preferences. And over, leave the last part was this uh, reporting groups page. Where we can come in and again, it has the option that we can um, change our groups. If we have a couple carriers that come in earlier than the rest um, and we want to be able to print out their paperwork for them when they come in, instead of going around and individually clicking the uh, the routes to get the reports, we can just put them in a group, have them all selected, print out the reports all in one, one swoop there. So the way to do that is, uh, this is Arizona again, so once your information gets populated in, it will look similar, but you'll have the DSP names here, the routes, you can see this one's not, these routes are unassigned at the moment. But say, for instance, Paul and Deborah come in around the same time. For Monday, Tuesday, this is separate, separate, separated out by days, as we can see. But for Monday, they come in at the same time. We'll select them. And we can come down to print their reports so that we have it ready to go for them when they come in. They can just grab their reports, get their papers, and uh, get started with their day. Okay, say we wanted to um, change the name. We can come over here and click Edit Group Description. And now we can go ahead and change um, a group name. We can make it whatever we wanted it to be. Um, just, a, just a preference thing on your end, what you wanted to do with that. Uh, group description, if we were to hover over this Monday one, we could see a sample group description for Monday one. If you put in whatever you need to here and you hover it over, it would display your message. So if we had made any changes, we would hit update description. And then the reporting groups page would be updated. So when we come in, we would see our changes that we made to Monday one or any of the other days at the top. Okay, um, if we needed to refresh, can do so here. The main thing is grouping these carriers together uh, if you need to, selecting or deselecting. Then we can go ahead and click print. And it would print out the reports that we need for those uh, selected carriers that we had. But if we scroll when you go over route down, number that's hyperlinked to what? The route number? Yeah, I see when, it, when you go over it, it, there's a link to something, right? Can you just click on it or? Yeah, we can see the routes 
should be the report by row. So there are six reports configured for um, this route. Currently, they're not assigned to any groups. If they were, it would populate here. So we can't okay. pull their report, but we can just see what they what they have access to. All right, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, I haven't gone in and played around with manage uh, warehouse mapping at all. Um, I think if we click that, see what it, at least what the page shows us. Okay, this looks like you can just update warehouse name, works the same sort of way. It just looks like it's, uh, it's more of a bulk bulk changes to be made. So we can close out of that. Okay. So unless I'm forgetting something here, I think we pretty much covered the big points under the, the route reports. Um, production reports is the big, one of the big things I would imagine that you're wanting to work with here so that if a carrier comes in saying, I need my whatever report, you, whatever report they need, you could come in there, find their route, get their report, get it to them and get them, get them on their way. Um, there are any other questions or if um, you want me to go back, show you something, didn't do a great job of explaining something else. Any last questions for this morning? Yep. You'll have plenty of opportunity to go in and, uh, and bring questions into uh, next week's sessions and beyond, but mm -hmm. by all means, uh, let us know. Tony, can you just uh, clarify? Again, just Okay, can Tony, can you just clarify when will uh, Rochester see all of the routes and all of the um, uh, report options loaded in Dart? So, so all of the routes are in there right now. Uh, all the delivery data is in is in there right now. Uh, the physical route in Dart is being created this week with the carriers. Uh, so you can go in and pull down delivery list uh, already. Uh, when you start to look at uh, carriers, uh, what they call DSPs, delivery service providers. That is the old data from the last time uh, when we originally started this up. That data will be refreshed uh, this week. And then, so you, if you went in today, you may find a carrier name that uh, went off route a couple of months ago. That will be cleaned up. But okay. these lists are out there now, and you can pull them down. Okay, thank you. Theron, right. thank you for uh, you know for the first first day of many training days. <laughs> yeah, no problem, you guys. And again, just to point out this uh, net help page, super helpful. Um, just a refresher, or a couple weeks, months down the road, you forget something. That's definitely the place that I would check out first. And Great just, job this uh, morning, Theron. Thanks. Okay, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Quick message from me, this is Paul. I encourage all of you to go in and play around with this stuff and uh, share some of the reports with your carriers that you see that you think that they're all going to be using it and, um, you know, just start playing with it in, in all your spare time that you have.